Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, or good morning, or good evening. Whatever is your pleasure, the Bill Crane Sports Report is on the air with Gary Patterson. Yes, sir. And we are now, first of all, forced to sort of, like a vulture, pick at the bones of the Red Sox. Oh, man. This corpse yeah, is... Done. Stick a fork in them. Yeah, they're, they, they are, are all done. Very disappointing season, don't you think? Oh, well, you know what is bothering me, right? Now? Well, there's a million things, but they've got their heads down. Yeah. You look at them, yeah. and they look like, uh, you know, when you're training a dog and you. <laughs> You get the rolled up newspaper right yeah. and you give yeah. him a whack in the butt and he looks at you. That's what they look like. Yeah. A dog that's got a good whack in the butt and he's slinking whimpering. off and yeah. whimpering. This is what they look like. Yeah. Cheapest. So, you know, it would seem as if uh, it's been this way from the beginning, right? And you have to go back to the very beginning of spring training and question the way they came into spring training the laissez-faire attitude that they had holding the pitchers back. None of the starting pitchers were ready at the start of the season. None of them were ready. And You, you didn't read the first paragraph of my <laughs> notes here, but that's what it says. That's what happened, though. Yes, I it mean, does. So and it starts right there. Yeah. And it even starts earlier, as we were chatting before this, the tape, you know, we sat here all winter talking about the bullpen. Absolutely. How the bullpen, they obviously had to make a move for the bullpen. Well, of course they're going to make a move for the bullpen. Look at this bullpen. How do yeah. you not make a move for the bullpen? They didn't do anything. You know, they, they signed. They didn't do anything. They signed six relief pitchers that are career minor leaguers no one has ever heard of right. and brought them to spring training and released all six of them. Right. That was their bullpen answer. Right. Yeah, well, one of them will, will be we'll lightning, lightning in a bottle. In a bottle. Yep. Yeah, um, how'd that work out? How, yeah, exactly. And and not only that, but the players, the position players, we got to give them time off. This one saying of um, uh, chorus, uh, we got to get them off their feet. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Is give he... me a break. Tell that to Cal Rifkin. Yeah, oh, tell that to, uh, I think it was Billy Close that played shortstop for the Red Sox back in the 50s. He played every game, yeah. 154 games. And he wasn't unusual. A, no. a lot of players That's did that. Right. Yeah. That's right. Um, but jeepers, creepers. Um, this is a quote um, that is in Athlon Sports okay. Baseball 2019 preview. Now, the preview I, at the beginning of yes, the year. Okay. I always buy the Athlon because I think it's done better than the others that are okay. out there, the Street and Smith and uh, somebody else. Um, they had a picture on the Red Sox page of yeah. David Price. David Price is a rare pitcher who is also a team leader. Huh. That was before the year? Yeah. Yeah. Who wrote that based on what? <laughs> yeah. Well, based on a good postseason, right? He did yeah. have a good postseason last year. And, and you know, Price has been up and down, and he's been down lately. Yep. But I don't think he's the problem with this team. I, I mean... Is he living up to $31 million a year? Nope. Nope. No, he's Never not. has. Never has. But, you know, they were the ones who agreed to pay him. So They're the ones that wooed him. So, you know, he's overall been a disappointment and has had it. But, again, he was another one. He wasn't ready to start the season either because his manager didn't get the starting pitching That's ready. That's right. Absolutely you know? correct. And I'm, and I'm kind of surprised that, they haven't had more injuries. So, you know, maybe in the big, big, giant picture of the player's career, maybe Alex is right because they did pitch a lot in October and, you know, the pitching staff has been healthy this year with the exception of Vivaldi, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who, by the way, you signed with 
money that you could have signed, legitimate relief pitching, and yes. you chose not to. Yes. Um, Sales had looks a like couple a mistake. of uh, brief trips onto the DL. Yeah, but um, Sale has some brief t trips every year. He's yeah. little, like Pedro used to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Christian, I, I wrote down some, some guys here we can talk about. Christian Vasquez, last yeah. year, 207 with three home runs and 16 RBIs. He's hitting in the 280s. I think he's a 60 to 17 home runs. Yeah. And I forgot to cut out the um, uh, latest stats in today's paper. Shame on me. But he's doing very well. Yeah. Okay. And he's even catching better, too. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Which Leon is not. I mean, yeah, uh, you're right. Leon is digressing on both the hitting you know, and the They say the like pitchers him. like him, but you know he is terrible on low balls in the dirt. Now, everybody throws balls in the dirt yeah. now. You know? Yeah, you put it up high. And then you come you, back you with, bounce the, it with the, the slider dirt. down yeah. in the dirt. Change the eye level. And, and Leon is not great at that. He gave up a key run against the Yankees when he kind of waved. He's not athletic you know? as... Doesn't get his body out. He wants to play him with the glove. like a bowling ball. Yeah. I think he could stand to lose uh, 35 or 40 So he pounds. can throw. He can. But he can't hit. Can't hit at all. Not a lick. And he can't handle low balls. There is but the pitchers supposedly like him. Yeah. Well, I so, tell you what. Let's let some pitchers on another team like him. Yeah. They should give him his walking papers at the end of the year. Yeah, well. We'll see, but. Yeah, well, you traded your other backup catcher, yeah, Swihart, right? Swihart. So. Uh, I have a note on Swihart in here someplace. <laughs> we'll come to it. He's on the injured list. Is he? Yeah. Uh, shortly after trading him out there, he went on with some severe injury. Oh, boy. Probably won't play for the rest of the year. Hmm. Ah. That's too bad. Yep. J.D. Martinez last year. Batted 330, 43 home runs, and 130 uh, ribbies, and struck out 146 times. He's not even come, come not close even to close. those numbers. No. I mean, he's still a solid offensive player. Yep. And he's going to probably means, hit 300. Pretty close. Yep. He and might get to 30. Yeah, might get 30 30 home runs. Two, maybe. Yeah, with a tailwind a right. couple of times. Um, but the guys aren't getting on that much. Well, they are. I shouldn't say that. They are getting on in front of him, but he is not delivering it. That's... So do you think he opts out? No, I don't think there's anybody that would pick. Um, I mean, he has the option to opt out of the contract and hit the market. You know what? And he's not, you know, he's not getting paid. I mean, I, he's getting paid like 22 yeah, or something, right? I think he will opt out. I think he might too. And I hope. The Red Sox do not start bidding against themselves in this mess. I agree, but what's your number? They got to have a number, right? So, would you, you know, I'd extend, four, four I'd is extend, twenty-five? I'd extend his twenty-two, and said that's it. I don't know, uh, if, if but I think push he has came he, he to has shove. the right to opt out. Yeah, not, push came to shove. I would say I'll add an extra year at twenty-two at the end. That's it. That's all I'm going to do. Yeah. Um, well, if he has a strong finish. Well, he, now he that, you know, that changes things. Really so, but what's does. his market, right? I mean, is his market 25, 27? I mean, I don't think it's over 30. Maybe somebody pays him 30 if they can get him for a short, you know. I mean, if it's in the National League, you got to play the guy. Yeah, and he's not good right? in the field. Yeah, I mean, that would... Would Theo, would Theo give him two years at 30 and stick him in right field for the Cubs? He'd no. mash in Wrigley. Yeah, he really would. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but he should be mashing in Fenway. He should be mashing too. in Fenway. Yeah. He did last year. He did. And, you know, he's putting up decent numbers. For, for, you know, the question yeah. I, is, you know, I think it's quite possible that last year, we saw the best years you're ever going to see from J.D. Martinez and Mookie Betts. Absolutely right, sir. The 2018 is going to be seen as the year, the career year for Mookie Betts and the career year for J.D. Martinez. High tide for both of them. High tide for both yeah. of them. Yeah. I think, no, well, now, Mookie hit 346, 32 home runs, 80 ribbies, and struck out 91 times. Last year. Last year. 
Yeah. Now, and how many runs does he score? Uh, he's a in the two eighties now. Yeah. Batting. Um, well, he's been much better the last two or three weeks. He has. Well, no yeah. question. He turned yeah. the corner. Yeah. Um, but you know, um, the pilot. Um, the Catholic newspaper mm -hmm. has, um, oh, who's the old guy they get writing in there now? Um, anyway, he wrote quite an interesting article about him. It, the point was, he's not smiling. The way he di did last year. Mookie. Mookie. Yeah. And he's wondering, you know, um, Mookie does not want to be the face of the franchise. He right. doesn't want to be the face of MLB baseball. Yeah. Um, and and he then they'd want, like him to be. They'd love him to be. To be and one of the faces, and him they, and Trout. And, yeah, that's it. You know, Trout's kind of the same way. He doesn't really want he, the limelight exactly, either. Exactly. So I think that Mookie would love to find a place to play. Oh, gee whiz. I don't know. Um, some place where he wouldn't be the story. Yeah. Uh, L.A. Dodgers, they could afford him, and he would not be the story. They could afford him. And because <coughs> baseball is not the story in L.A., they got a how lot about, of other about, things going on. How about Atlanta, right? They got a lot of young players, so they probably got the money to, you know, to. They got the money. They got the money to. Pick and up, pay him thirty five a year. They got a team that's on the rise. He's from Nashville, so Nashville to yep. Atlanta, a short yep. little hop for his that's family. Right. That makes sense too. Um, now this is strange, wacky. What if Tampa Bay got some money somehow? They get a bunch of young players down you, there. Yeah, you know how they could get some money. Move to t move to Nashville. That's right. Absolutely. Move that franchise to Nashville. Yeah, yeah. They got to get and out. Sign of Mookie Betts, who's yeah. from Nashville. I mean, how great is yeah. that? I mean, now the other place too would be in New York. Um, the Mets, maybe. Yeah, I don't see, there. yeah, I don't see him there. Now, I don't see him in Philadelphia. That's yeah. People go there and they get slaughtered. I um, mean. I like the idea, and Nashville is growing. As you know, I love Nashville. Mm -hmm. I've been there a couple of times, and it's really a city that's growing leaps and bounds. They support the football team. They support the hockey team. Yeah. Right. So if you got two major league sports already, both of which are well supported, I you know we went to the Patriots game down there yep. last year. Yep. It's fantastic. It's right there. Uh, Right over near that football stadium, they got room to build a baseball stadium. Yeah, they could build and tie the whole and tie the whole thing in. There, yeah. And you know, if you're Tampa Bay, you watch Tampa Bay. There is this great young team, and they they're just a gritty, gutsy team every single year. Lowest payroll, yep. and they got five thousand people. Yeah, you, you you see the games, you see a foul ball go up. There's just there's nobody there. Yeah. It, it's I mean, I can't believe that they go on year after year like this. I can't believe Major League Baseball and allows it. Whether they move them to Nashville or Charlotte. Up in Montreal. Montreal. Yeah. I mean, somebody, you know, so you got to build a stadium. Yeah. But to me, it's Nashville. Move I, that team to Nashville. I, and the other team that I, I thought that he might Mookie fit Betts in is on a would be the Colorado that's yeah. a low-key operation. Yeah. And um, measure what he'd hit out there. Yeah. Um, but How about the Angels? He goes and teams up with Trout. Oh, they know. that would be a, a dream. They got the money. Yeah. Oh, sure. They got plenty yeah. of money. Yeah. Yeah. Um, JBJ uh, batted 234 last year with 13 home runs and 59 RBIs. And that's just about exactly his stats right. this year. I mean, it's a carbon copy. Um, he is what he is. His throws, however, this year are not good. They've been, yeah. I yeah, mean, his he, accuracy is. Accuracy has gone down the tubes. Gone down the tubes. I don't know why. I don't know either, but um, 
I would. So where's the coaching staff? Oh, not, no. I'm not talking about Cora. I'm talking about the coaching staff. Where's the hitting hitting coaches? We yeah. have two of them. Yeah. What the hell are they doing? Right. I mean, uh, wow. The wow is all you can say. Yeah. Uh, and, and now Xander Bogarts uh, last year hit 288, 23 home runs, 103 RBIs. He's exceeding those numbers he's this year. He's having a fabulous and year. And he's having a fantastic year. Yeah. And he's the kind of guy you build a team around. Yeah. I thought Mookie would be the kind of guy you build. And Mookie still would. He's, but there's yeah. something wrong here with He's just, he's like a round peg in the square hole or something all of a sudden. Well, uh, he's having an off year. So, you know, the question comes, what's, what's, he, what's Mookie got? One more year? Is it one or two? 2021, I think. So, so he might have two years. Yeah. Which they need to address the situation this offseason. Yeah. Right? You know, I think it's 2020. So I think if it it's is. only got one year left, um, you need to trade him, but you kind of need to trade him to a place that he's going to end up staying. Yeah. You know? Um, and, you know, I'm not sure who that is. I, I'm not sure either, because I'm not sure what this kid wants. I'd pick up the phone and call Theo, though. Yeah. So if you can't sign him, and I still think signing him is their first choice, would it and I think it would be my first choice, too. He's as long as you can do it within reason, market, but within reason. He's a talent that comes along once in a lifetime. Right. Well, but if he's not going to sign. That's right. You've got to minimize you got to wheel losses. him out of here yeah. this winter. Yep. Yeah. Along with JBJ. Kiss him goodbye, too. I'm tired of waiting for him to get hot. Right. Um, well, you know, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be opposed to letting JBJ go to market because I don't know that there's a team out there. I mean, there's a lot of good center fielders in the game right now. So, you know, is he elite defensively? He has not been elite defensively. He's still good. He's still very good. Gold glove caliber, but has he been elite defensively? Yes, he's no. sir, separated but the, himself. But there's a lot of good center fielders yes, in is. baseball right now. Yeah, Kim Meyer, uh, Yeah, he's. Uh, I love him. Yeah, me too. So he's not extraordinary. He's good, but he's yeah, not very, extraordinary. Very, very good. Very right. good. Uh, so, but the throwing is a problem. Right, which hopefully can be fixed because he hasn't. This has been a very bad year for his accuracy. Yeah. Worse than other years. Yeah. So. That's why I'm saying, where are the coaches? Is there? Yeah, is he one setting these, himself is, properly? Right. Yeah, I mean, this is mechanics. Where know? are the coaches out there at uh, 4:30 working with him a little yeah. bit on his footwork and whatever, you know? But then we've got Rafael Devers. Yeah, superstar who, in the making. Uh yeah, no question. Yeah, no question. And the key, he came to camp in shape. They told yeah. him to lose some weight. Hit the weight room. Guess who shows up? A kid that's hitting <coughs> over 300 yeah. with a skillion home runs so He's far. He's having a great year. And I got to tell you something. He hits a ball about as hard as you want to see it hit. Yeah. And he uh, can handle anybody's fastball. Yes, he can. You he can, can come out, go, out, go ahead and throw your 100-mile-an-hour fastball. He, he can get it. He put... Uh, Chapman's yeah. 103 miles into the yeah. um, uh, the uh, the the bin there, the fenced off area where all the trophy guys are. Yeah, out there. That's a hell of a shot for a left-handed hitter to hit it. Jeepers, creepers. Um, the sky's the limit with Rafael Devers. Yeah. Um, what seemed to me. That Mookie would want to stick around with yeah. Bogey, with Rafi, and see what happens. Yeah. Well, uh, you know what? We're talking about the offseason already in August, yeah. which is too bad. It is but, a shame. Uh, but it's very real as well. Yeah. And I think, you know, number one is you need to determine the situation with Mookie. Yeah. And if he just won't talk about signing, and it's clear he's going to free agency, then you need to trade him. Absolutely. You need to trade him. Listen, and Bill Belichick 
has written a playbook on yeah. dealing with players. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes, oh, he's so cold-hearted, you know, oh, God, how can he do this? But when, it's not just prospects. I mean, you need to bring back major league talent. That's right. I mean, if you're going to trade Mookie, you should be able to fix your bullpen. Because, you know, when you look at next year, you know, they have an opportunity, right? I mean, they've got money coming off the... Right, Sandoval's finally off and is eighteen yep. million. They've got uh, Porcello's up at twenty. I don't 20, think they're resigning. Twenty, him. twenty-one. Yeah, they're not going to resign him. Um, so they're going to have, and they got other dead money coming off too. I forget who it they, is, but they do. Um, so they're going to have some money. They and you look at the team. You know, you, you're going to have Sale. You're going to have Price. You're going to have Erod. You need, they're going to need to get a starter. They're going to have to get a legitimate, you know, two, three, four starter. Yeah. And then they got to we gotta, fix the bullpen. We've got to pray. The offense that, isn't a problem, right? You, they lead the major leagues in run scored. In run scored. They lead, the, they lead the major right. leagues in, in run hits. scored. So, you know, and Mookie's having a good year. Yeah. But a, I don't know, if you looked at the wins above replacement year, uh, is he having all, you know, you can't replace those stats by getting another outfielder? They need to get a second baseman for next year is what they need to do, right? Uh, so in, Mookie could bring back a second baseman and a really legitimate top-end relief pitcher and maybe a prospect or two. I think a couple of prospects. Mookie is a superstar. Yeah. So but he's a superstar who's going to walk on you. That's right. In another you year. Can't let that happen. So and the fans will be upset. That's what I'm saying. That. If you could sign him, fantastic, sign him. Sign him, absolutely. And have him endeavors, a lefty batting, you know, and, as the as and, the and Zander. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, listen, they've got some players. Right. Yeah. Um, and you know they've they've been in the last ten years they've been good at developing positional players. Yeah. They've been terrible at developing pitchers. Yeah, what pitchers have they developed? Brandon Workman. Brandon Workman. Barnes, right? Matt they, Barnes. They developed yeah. Barnes. Uh, Workman last year was 6-1 and one with a 3.27. Uh, he's 1.91 earned on average this year. Um, just those damn walks. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah. They can't hit him, but he, yeah. he just walked. He walked so many guys. I, I, I don't think he is the closer. No. I like him in the seventh inning. Yeah, he's yeah. part of a pen. And you can't overwork him either. Right. Now, Matt I mean, Bonds, uh, I like his arm. The rest of his game is uh, I'm not wild about. Uh, yeah, he's in love with his curveball, and, yep. and when he's got it going, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a great it's pitch, tough. right? No question. But the problem, I think, with Barnes is he can throw the ball 98. He has no idea where it's going. No, none. None you know, he had the terrible uh, showing against the Yankees. And then he was in, was it last night? And catcher setting up outside, and he's throwing it high and inside. I mean, he lets those fastballs go. He has no idea where they're going. He's overthrowing them. That's why. Yeah. So, uh, so he's... But uh, is he a legitimate major league bullpen piece? Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. He is. Yeah. Somewhere down the pecking order. Right. Yeah, he's not my closer or my eighth inning. You know, guy. if you had brought in, and we talked about this last time, that you, for the money you spent on Evaldi and Steve Pierce, you actually could have brought in Ottavino and Britton Absolutely. for the same money. Oh, I get And so if you had Ottavino and Britton, and then Barnes was the guy behind them, great. You, now you got the makings you, you of a good bullpen. You, you can see right through the, my sheets <laughs> here, all the stuff I got on here. Yeah. And I got Zach Britton written down. Yeah. Yeah. We still don't have a lefty for no, the second year, no. right? None. And when they bring that kid up, Pointer, yeah, uh, from uh, the Paw Sox, and he comes in with that eighty-nine mile an hour, yeah, yeah, uh, fastball. Uh, that boy, that's not scaring the hell out of anybody. Um, Hector Valesquez, last year, seven and two, three point one eight. He's uh, a forgotten player down at Pawtucket now. Uh, Chris Sale was 12 and 4, 2.11, and he certainly has fallen on bad times. He certainly has. Now, um, do you think it's mechanics? If so, where the hell are the pitching coaches? Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, 
first question is with him is always, is he healthy? And yep. I think and I think he is. I mean, he's yep. throwing. I mean, he's not a 98, 99 guy anymore. Nope. He's a 95, but he can get 95, 96. Yep. And the good thing with him was what made him great was the fact that he combined power with location. He could, he knew, you know, we talk about Barnes having no idea where it was going. Chris yeah. Sale did have an idea where it was going. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. And he, Would you ever consider putting Chris Sale in as the closer? I don't know. I don't think so. No, at least not at this point, you know. Because if they're overusing him, I don't know. Uh, you know, his stuff can be so dominant. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Eduardo Rodriguez last year was thirteen and five, three point eight two in run average. About just about what he's doing now. Yeah. David Price was sixteen and seven, three point five eight. He's nowhere near that. Now. Right. Right. Um, Rick Pasello, 17 and 7, mm. 4.28. Rick has fallen on hard times. He has. And nobody works harder on that team. No. And nobody's teammates support him more. He's, he's a good kid. He's, he's a good guy. Yeah. Where's the pitching coach? Yeah. What in the devil Avenger, is yeah. going on? Yeah. Oh, uh, Lavangie's a good guy. Well, he's a local I think, guy. Yeah, I think he is yeah. a good guy, but it's a it's a problem. I mean, you, know, you talk about the hitting coaches. I mean, I don't have an issue with the hitting coaches. The team's hitting just fine, but pitching. And so you know, is it is it? I, I think it's uh, you know, like Eddie Andelman. You just talked about but the blame pie, right? I mean, yep. Uh, is some of it the pitching coach? Sure, it probably is, right? Well, the pitching and, But uh, a lot of it's just they don't have the horses. Yeah, that's right. But uh, the hitting coach, uh, and I got it written here someplace, JBJ and Michael Chavis. Now, Michael Chavis can hit the ball yep. uh, about oh, two miles. Yeah. Uh, hits the ball hard. But, number one, I want the under... Uh, the, uh, the uppercut, yeah. Uppercut out of his. Uh, they all do it now. Yep. I want him to hit, level off and hit the ball hard. And he number could, two. Yeah. He would hit some screaming line God, drives if yeah. he did that. Oh, he'd kill a couple <laughs> yeah. of pitches. <laughs> yeah. And, and I want him also to get a better handle on the strike zone. Yeah. Well, hopefully that'll come. And, and you know what? If they don't give up on him and trade him, here's a kid that's going to hit 290, 295, 300, yep. and he's going to hit 25, 28 home runs yeah. and a pile of doubles. Right. And he's uh, going to do it cheaply for the next three or four right. years. That's right. Now the, Which so, they need. Interestingly enough, the Red Sox made a very interesting move yesterday. They took Bobby Dahl back from double A and moved him up to triple A, up to the Paw Sox. Oh, they did? Yeah. So that's interesting. Hmm. They said, uh, well, we want to see what happens at the next level. Good thinking. Yeah. I mean, you know, during the offseason, Chavis and Dahlbeck are interchangeable pots. Which one do we trade? Yeah. Uh, which one's got the real goods? Right. So bring him, send him up to AAA. Good. And uh, let's see how he does, because there's an awful lot of ex-major leaguers down there. Maybe we can call him up in September. Do you know what? That's not beyond the realm of possibility. Why not? You're going to be out of it. Yeah. You're out of it. Was Evaldi worth the $68 million? No. No. That was a lapse in judgment. Well, yeah, it was. It was an, un an understandable lapse in judgment. They got sucked in, but... No, he wasn't. And again, it's an uh, it's an opportunity cost, right? By spending that money, what is it that you couldn't do? And it was signing two if you relievers. Remember, Ottavino and Britton were still out there late That's in free right. agency. They and didn't. They, they didn't get huge money. And they both signed right. for almost identical contracts. Right. And Three eight, years, twenty-seven. Eight, right. Yeah. So you could have signed them both. You know, they got Joe Kelly money. Yeah. Joe is uh, slugging it out out in L.A. with yeah. a 
4.95 earned run average. Yeah, Joe's been struggling. Yeah. Um, by the way, um, this didn't cost us anything. But Andrew Kashner, um, he was 4 and 15 last year, 5.29 yeah. earned run average. Uh, pitched 153 innings and allowed 177 huh. hits. That, that's... Is his contract up at the end of the year, I hope? Uh, no. He's under their control for next year. Oh, he is? Yeah. Uh, boy, oh boy, huh? Well, depends on the, depends on the number. I mean, if you're telling me he's the fifth starter next year, maybe I'm okay with that. How about the sixth starter and the long man out of the world? Well, that'd be even more okay with yeah. that. But, but you got to tell me who's your fifth starter there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. The BS page. Okay. Management. Dombrowski. I like our bullpen. Yeah. Nice call, Dave. Yeah. Cora. We will play better. When? He said that a thousand times yeah. this year. Ownership. These guys have to play better. We don't need to spend more money. These guys have got to perform. We don't need to lose more money. Right. Dombrowski. I have no constraints on me. I can spend money to improve the team. I have never been told I can't spend money. Yeah, I'm not buying that. What but. a... You know, the Every, problem is, it's not, the, it's not the amount of money. They spend plenty of money. Yeah. It's how they spend it. Exactly. It, the, you know, the, those ridiculous contracts that, you know, dig through the annals of this show and we'll yeah. find that <laughs> every, every, virtually, you know, when they signed Hanley Ramirez, I remember us sitting yeah. here saying, what are you, what, what, why Absolutely are you giving them this much money? Insane. You know, and then they go out and sign Sandoval and it's like, we, what? Sandoval? Madness. What do you need Sandoval for? Two That's of them, that kind of money. Two of them both fat, out yeah. of shape. So, uh, and you know they did they did it again. Quite frankly, signing Sale when they didn't have to. Stephen Pierce. Yeah. Stephen now, Pierce. granted, that was not a lot of money, and he almost became a folk hero. Here. Right. But six and a quarter. Did they give him two years? That, no, I think they just it's gave just him one. one. Okay. Uh, but. Yeah, who, who would have signed for a couple of mil? With that and a couple more million dollars, you get one of those relief pitchers. That's exactly right. And you know, yeah, I mean, and and the two hitting coaches again. JBJ's needed help for three years. Chavis needs help now. Sandy Leone needs help. There's nothing they can do to help these guys. Um, well, this you know. is what JBJ. And Sandy Leon really and truly are. Yeah. Dump them. Yeah. Let's move on. Well, and, you, well yes, but you got to, again, I you got to have somebody to play center field. You, you know, exactly. so far today we've traded Mookie and we've, we're getting rid of JBJ. <laughs> It'll get worse. And we got to put a team on the field next year. You know? Well, I'm getting rid of more here. Yeah, okay. The bullpen coach, the guy who stands and watches the guys warm up. Yeah. What does he do besides eat? And when will he finally hit 400 pounds? Yeah. Man, yeah. what a load yeah. he is. It's a good gig. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, here's a serious question. How much are Alex Cora's, of Alex Cora's moves are dictated from the analytic whiz children upstairs with their computers? I don't think that much. I think he listens to them. I think Alex is interested in what they have to say. And I think he looks at the tablet there in the dugout. And I think it's a factor in him making decisions. But I don't think he makes decisions based solely on that. I think, Boy, I think they, he's... They are ramming it down Kevin Cash's throat down to uh, Tampa. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, I... I hope that's not happening in Boston. Yeah. But I know also that uh, John Henry made his money with no, I know. mathematics and yeah. Uh, yeah. figuring out how to fool the market and all that stuff. Right. Well, I think uh, Alex is very interested in that topic. Yeah. I don't think he's opposed to it and it's being forced down his throat. I think he's very 
interested in it and participates when they're reviewing that stuff. And is it a factor in decisions that he makes? I'm sure it is. Yeah. But at the time, at the you know, and and but that's no different. What's different about that, right? Even back in the old days, you needed to bring up a pinch hitter. Yep. And you knew, well, you know, Bills. Four for twelve against this guy, and Billy over here is zero for nine. We're sending Bill up. Yep. I mean. Yeah, and you know, in the old days too, they had a black book. Right. All right, and they go in the black book and it says, yes. uh, "Gary hits uh, lefties very well." Right. Um, and uh, this is a good opportunity because uh, he can beat out an infield hit too. So let's send him up to pinch it. So they were using a very crude form of analytics. Based on right. their memory and notes they've made in the little black books. Right. Um, but, and it's all good information. And, you know, are they, were they less prepared than these guys are today to manage a baseball game? No, I don't think so. I don't so. think so. I don't think so. I think they were better, better yeah. prepared. I yeah. really do. Yeah. Because they're all ex players. Because they're, they're a manager, yep. they're managing. The players, which is managing the environment and the team spirit and yeah. coming down as a disciplinarian when you need to on individual players. Um, the team meeting, Cora. Yeah. It's on, it's off, it's downplayed. The players call one of their own, shrouded in mystery, not unlike a John le Carre novel. <laughs> um, but what was that all about? I don't know. Um, it, it was about a team that is just lost, really and can't struggling. Find its way. You know, they won the first three games of that uh, Yankee series. Yankee series, and then uh, seemed to be picking up momentum, and optimism was was budding, and then they just hit the wall. And it's not that they just lost those games. They were getting destroyed in those games. Yeah. And they were just playing bad baseball. You know, from Jackie Bradley throwing to first base where there's nobody, nobody there. I mean, and two runs come in. I mean, uh, there's been some balls that, quite frankly, because he's extraordinary, I thought Mookie was going to catch him, that he hasn't caught them. And... Uh, overall, their defense has been mediocre. You know, um, even though uh, you know, even though parts of it are getting a little better, but you know they're playing Chavis at second base, which I get. But Chavis probably could be a major league second baseman. Well, he could, but it would have you know it would have been nice if he had a year at AAA to sure, do it, sure, right? It because been. he's learning yep. on the fly, and you yep. got to give the kid credit; he's been okay. Yep. He makes the routine plays. Yep. Um, you know, he's turning double plays. He's not... He doesn't hurt you. Up. He looks like somebody turning a double play who's just learning how to turn a double play, mm -hmm. who's listened to what the coaches have told him, and he, you know, mechanically yep. he's got it, but he's not smooth yet. Yep. I mean, I think his long-term uh, place might be first. Yeah, I, I think so, too. But they've got a kid... Oh, boy... Double A or single A that they're grooming for first base. And of course, you got Dahlbeck. Yeah. So you got to stick him someplace, yeah. too. Um, <sighs> I'll tell you that the Yankees got the second baseman last offseason, kind of quietly at the time, even though I remember us talking about it in DJ uh, oh. Mathieu. Or, yeah. 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 He, uh, that guy. What a great year he's having. They didn't sign him for huge money. No. He fested out there for quite a while. Right. Uh, you know, so I mean, he was a known commodity. Yes, right? he Everybody was. Everybody knew he was a good hitter. No. And uh, left-handed batter, welcome to, welcome to Yankee Stadium. But <laughs> since the, the Red, Sox, Red Sox didn't have 10 cents to spend. Right. Yeah. Because they're paying Sandoval. Uh, and you know. God, all those guys. David Price. And, do you so remember? Sandoval money. Would have got him. Yeah. The last off season. Yes, sir. You're absolutely right. Yep. And what wounds that would have right. been. Right. Uh, Wade, do you remember Wade Miley? Yeah. He's 10 and 4 with a 3.05 with Houston. 3.05? Yeah, glad we got rid of him. Yeah, so what's he there? Fifth starter? I think so. 
Yeah. yeah. Uh, Mini Machado signed for uh, about the same amount of money as the gross national product of Latvia. Yeah. Uh, and he's got 26 home runs and 276 batting average. 276 or 26? Yeah. Where do you end up, San Diego? Uh, um, yes. Yeah. 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 Good luck with now, that. Now, Eric Hosmer's out there. Mm -hmm. I signed him last year. Yeah. He had a tough time getting going, getting traction. Initially, yeah. So this year, he's got 16 home runs, 70 RBIs, and he's hitting 286. That's and about he signed for less than half, or approximately half, of what Machado got. Yeah. And that's about, that's pretty consistent with his career. Yeah. And uh, San Diego is 51 and 58, and then 19 and a half games out. Yeah. So those two signings didn't exactly move them to the top of the heap. Yeah, take a look at their pitching. Yeah. It's all about pitching. Mike Yastrzemski. Yeah, having a pretty good year, isn't he? Ten home runs, 34 RBIs. Good San him. Francisco. And he's coming to Boston. Oh, that'll be fun. Yeah, with San Francisco. Travis Shaw has been sent to the minors. He can back up again. And he's batting a robust 162. Something definitely there. wrong there. Yeah. Zach Britton, earn run average 2.40 with 21 holes. Wow. Those H's. Yeah. I always thought they were helpers. I thought that was a better word than holes. Yeah, but, I like that. But uh, Zach Britton, yeah. I yeah. mean. We uh, dumped Jose Iglesias, smooth uh, fielding shots. Yeah. Stop. And he's uh, been Cincinnati's regular all season long. It's been 285. No, oh, good for him. That's yeah. pretty good for him. Yeah. Well, the Red Sox as favorites to win the American League East are now 59 and 55, 14 and a half games out. Now that I wrote that before last night. Yeah. In spring training, Gary and I called this team an impending train wreck. Yeah. We I'm have have blundered into the truth. Right. So if we and thousands of other people could see it coming, why why couldn't they? That's exactly right. With this salary restrictions tying their hands so fiercely, they couldn't figure a way to work their way through it. Right. You would have had to move somebody, you know. Yeah. You could have traded. Porcello before the season, freed That's up right. $20 million bucks. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Right? He's, but then, now, now he's going to walk and you're going to get nothing, nothing for him? Nothing. Yeah. Assuming you don't resign him. He'll, well, you know what? If he goes, the best he gets is 12. Uh, two years, 12 mil. I don't know. Do the Red Sox resign him? At two for 12, they probably do. But, yeah. you know, pitching the pitching market. I think it's going to be. It's going to be. He's he's going to be able to get more than. 12, everybody 12 needs million. pitching, and you know. Somebody may overpay him. Yeah, quite that, frankly, that's right. I don't um, know if there's any big names coming up this year. Anthony Rizzo is batting two eighty six. Good ball player. Good, good solid player. Yeah. There was a one of the Chicago writers, said that serious contender for the Hall of Fame. Well, we'll see. He's got to. He's, he's he better pick it up a little. He's got to, yeah, put up some numbers. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. We'll see. Yep. I mean, he is talented. Justin Verlander. Yeah. Astros overpaid for him at the end of his career. That's what the Red Sox said. Fifteen and four, two point six eight earned yeah. on average. He's been very consistent Man since he signed that contract. Alive. I would love and to have thing, seen him in Boston. And the thing about him is, you know, he's never been hurt. He just pitches. Takes he the just ball pitches every, every year. And every year he's got his 33 starts. Yep. You know, um, he's not going on the DL. I mean, I don't know if he's ever been on he's the DL. He's a bulldog. Yeah. Yeah. Um. The perils of signing high-priced free agents. Yeah. Goldschmidt, 260. Bryce yeah. Harper, 248. 
He's hitting 248. Yeah. He's in the 20s for homers. Yeah, I think. I think low they're 20s. both in the t low 20s. Low 20s. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, boy, based on the prices that they got. Right. So you know, if they if uh, if those contracts end up by the end of this off season being viewed as Boy, that was a bad deal. And Mookie continues to have a good year, but, you know, mm -hmm. not a Mookie caliber year that we all expect. What happens to his market? What happens it, to his trade value? It comes down. It comes down. Both. Yeah. 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 Um, changing gears and picking at a different scab. Um, uh, Josh Gordon has applied for reinstatement. Yeah. Uh, and he's hoping that he stay in clean and they reinstate him. I hope so. I hope so for the kid. Yeah. Uh, and secondarily, because he's a damn good football player. He is. Um, and the defense on the Patriots looks like uh, the monsters of the midway from the old Chicago Bears. Yeah. Uh, everything I read uh, continues to talk about their strengths. Uh, and, yeah, and it, it, they're very deep in the secondary. Yeah. You know, for years we were worried about their secondary, sometimes rightfully so, sometimes not, going into the season. They just seem so deep now. The linebackers. Yeah, uh, we'll see on the linebackers. I mean... Hightower's flying around, but can he stay healthy, right? Well, of course, that, that's right. But they cut back his reps last year. Yeah. And I think that helped a lot. I think it did, too. Um, and uh, Van Noy just keeps getting better. Yeah. I mean, this guy is uh, he, a basket smasher. Yeah. The uh, improvement with him since he got here is amazing. It is. And you know what he said in an in-depth um, interview. Um, they explained to me what my role was. Yeah. Yeah. How about that? <laughs> how about that? How basic can yeah. you be about coaching? But they defined what they wanted out of them. And then told you to do that and only that. Yeah, exactly. That's your job. Yeah. You're here. You're not over there. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> Even if the ball's over there, you're not over That's there. That's right. Because you cases. have got to cover over here. Yeah. Yeah. And um, the uh, the signing of the wayward son there that went out to Cleveland and has come back. Uh, Jamie Collins. Yes. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Now, Jamie Collins has not said one bad thing Oh, yet. he said nothing but positive speak. So, I, I saw him being interviewed la yeah, the other night. Yeah. It was all positive. He's glad to be here. I mean, I think he he brings a new attitude. Look, he made his money. He got paid. That's right. He That's got right. paid. He made the big bucks. So, you know. And with, if in a perfect world, in his absolute perfect season, he doesn't get hurt, he stands to make around five mil in yeah. incentives. Well, you know what? At this point in his career, not too shabby That's on good. a Super Bowl team. It's a good number for both sides. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, it really worked out well. Yeah. How about the Tom Brady contract drama? Wow, well, you know, as it turns Some out... Some excitement, huh? Yeah, so they announced a multi-year contract in the same afternoon, Brady's saying, well, I'm, you know, going year to year. It's a one-year <laughs> deal. But how about the fact that this the salary cap rules allow you to sign this contract with a clause in it that says as soon as the season ends, the NFL season ends, the contract is null and void. <laughs> so that we just can make it up again. And the reason you do that is because it allows you to spread salary cap money into the future and it frees up five and a half million. So you know, are they, are, are they making a move? I mean, now they have, I think it's 13 or 14 million yeah. in cap space. Yeah. So you talk about the tackle for, for, uh, yeah, for San Francisco. San Francisco's uh, yeah. uh, Trent uh, Williams, yeah, Williams, I think it is. Williams, yeah. yeah. 
uh, who's a perennial pro bowler, but also doesn't play full seasons. Yep. Uh, he's uh, he's had a lot of injury money. issues. But you know, they get depth. But Bill doesn't seem to mind that. No, he doesn't. He yeah. brings them in here yeah. and straightens them out. Um, or, of course, you know, there's money sitting there if Gronk decides to come back. Now, that's an interesting subject because they're not talking about that. Yeah, well, they've got the cap space. They do. So they're at 13 or 14 now, depending on, you know, who he Bill cuts. Yeah. That not 13 or 14 could go up a little bit. I think you're right. Um, and, and you get Sonny Michelle. Boy, nice, nice rookie year. Not the greatest rookie year that ever happened. No, solid, though. Yeah. But solid. Ran well in the playoffs. Yep. Um, Had a good Super Bowl. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, bright future. Yeah. All right. Um, but you could you know, he had a little surgery there, a clean out of the knee. Yeah. And let's see how he is. Now, he has a further knee problem. They're going to have to go pick somebody up. Um, that's some, yeah. But it's been cut. Pay him three. Yeah, they're running back. Like I mean, that. but they're around. Right. And they're good ones around that you can get for two, two and a half, three million bucks. Right. And they versus, may have to do Versus that. the five, they're paying Burkhead, right? Yeah. Uh, but so. do you, know, you know what's interesting? That for one reason or another, Belichick loves Burkhead. Yeah, I know. But we'll see. That's it. Exactly. We'll exactly. See. I mean, I think they're looking at that left tackle. I don't think they want to pay him a lot. And I don't know what that, you know, because he's going to be traded, whatever signing bonuses he had stay with San Francisco on the cap, they only got to pay the base salary. So I don't know what his base is for this year. <sighs> and then he'll probably walk at the end of the year, just like, you know. And a, another rental. That's well, what uh, we do. Yeah. That's what we do. Yeah, that's right. Get that big left tackle and we'll stick him on the offensive line. And, yep. Um, the Patriots have a few spots up for grabs. You know what? I don't really see it. They got wide receivers. They're going to have to sort that out. Yeah. And if Gordon comes back, well, there may be a job there. One. Yeah. If not, there's probably two jobs. I think they like Gordon. Oh, they do like him. I think Brady yeah. liked him. He Brady worked out with him in the offseason, right? Yeah. And he was throwing to him in yeah. the offseason. Yeah. Um, Tight ends, yeah, well, that's, that's a problem. That's a, a who knows situation. So the question is, you know, do we have a couple that can at least block? That's right. Right, because this offense, I think, is going to shift a little bit. It's going to be more of a running attack, I yep. think, than we're used to. Ball possession. Ball possession. So yeah. And you have a, a tight ends that can A, block, and B, yeah, on occasion, spin out for a six-yard game. You know, second and seven. Yep. Pick it up for us. Yep. Right? Yep. Uh, just enough to keep the other team honest that this, they, exactly. they will actually throw to the yeah, tight ends. That's right, yeah. Right, so they got to cover them. The offensive line um, is, oh, by the way, um, one of the things that they're toying with is James Devlin is a tight end. Well, I, yeah, I'd toy away. Yeah, because, yeah. I mean, he I is. I would toy away with that. He's one of the best blockers on the team. Right. Um, and if push comes to shove, put him out there. Yeah. I mean, I have no doubt that J he would become a good blocking tight yeah. end. Yeah. And actually, yeah, I think so, too. Uh, but you lose him coming through the yeah. hole, wiping out linebackers yeah. for Sony yeah. you, Michelle. You, you may have to put one of your tackles, yeah. uh, one of your guys in there, uh, you know. I, I don't think the, uh, you know, I know Watson's going to, you know, be suspended for the first yep. four games, but I think there's additional somebody to come in. I think you you're know, right. Somebody I that gets cut, somebody that gets yep. released. And it's going to be a veteran. It's going to be a veteran. In and pick up the playbook and say, all right, here's the playbook uh, yep. light. Right. L-I-T-E. Right. Uh, and have him be able to say, okay, I can, I can live with this. Bang, bang, bang. So I think they can do that. Um. Le Adrian Waddle. Out for the year, I hear. Out for the year. Yeah, it's too bad. Yep, yep. Uh, too bad is right, but it's, uh, he, he took the chance and went to yeah. Buffalo. Nothing good happens well, in yeah. Buffalo. At least he made a little money. That's right. Not yep. a lot, but a little. Yep. The offensive line, 
Boy, I don't think there's any jobs available there. Well, beyond left tackle. I mean, yeah, I mean, need, yes. We need the left tackle. Well, answer. we have to sort out who we're going to play We have to sort there. out left tackle. Yeah. I, I'm not sure Thune, Thune, uh is big enough to play left tackle. No. Um, He's a he might get a little caliber guard. Down. I think you just leave him. He needs to be right yeah. where he is. Yeah. Because he's a Pro Bowl level yeah, player. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I really, this and Isaiah He's up win. after this year, and he's going to be going. Mm -hmm. They're not going to sign him. I mean, well, he's somebody's going to pay him like $12, $13 million a oh, year. Yeah. Wow. That's what guards get now. It's unbelievable. And, and Ted Karras is one of the backups. Yeah. And at some point in time, they've got to play him, and then he's going to go. Yeah. Um, David Andrews at center. How, how much money are they going to pay him? Yeah, he's going to have to, he's going to have his hand out. I think it's next you know, when year. you when you follow the Patriots, it's in, in a lot of ways they're they're almost like a, a college program. Yeah, with the exception of Tom Brady and Rob Gronkowski and Goskowski, you and know, a couple of the guys and a, on, and a uh, handful of other teams. players. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of turnover here. There is. People don't get drafted here and play 13 years here. They, That's right. They, they don't if they're good. Yeah. That's right. If they're good. I mean, Trey Flowers, you know. Yeah. See you later. Go get pay your money. Them. I go mean, so money. They're, they're willing to pay yeah. it. Go get it. Yeah. Um, but the rest of this, the defensive line looks good. The linebackers look good. The cornerbacks look great. And you know what? They made a signing during the offseason, and I was so happy about it. One of my favorite players they hmm. re-signed, Brandon Bolden. Yeah. They you did. Know, they brought him back. I saw him talking the other night. I'll tell you, that guy is a wild man on special teams. Yeah. And he's a 230-pounder, and he can run. Yeah. Um, I think he's a, a glue guy, too, for yeah. the team. I think he's... Do you know what they told him? They were going to cut him last year. And they said, just wait. Just be patient. We're going to get you right back. Yeah. Well, uh, where did he end up? Buffalo, was it? Um, I forget. I think it might have been. Or uh, Cincinnati. I forget where they yeah. you. But they offered him a big paycheck for him, like around 1.6 or something, 1.8. Mm. And he just said, I had to take it. Yeah. Um, yeah, he did. Yeah. So they signed him to a two-year this time. Uh, yeah, he's a core special teamer, no he question. He is, and he's a tough dude. Yeah. Tough dude. He's Bill's kind of guy. That's exactly right. Yeah. Bill made sure he got him back. Yep. Well, folks, um, we got a lot of baseball and a little bit of football, and uh promise you next time around it'll be, the situation will be reversed. Yeah. It'll be a lot more football. Yeah, it, things will be heating up. Yeah, uh, and you know, there's been a couple of great stories in the globe. Uh, both on basketball and on football, about kids and some of these kids that are uh, that have been picked by the Celts and, and the uh, uh, their Patriots about the adversities they had in their early life. Mm -hmm. Great stuff. Yeah. Well, maybe we'll talk about that okay. next time. Okay. So, my friends, have a great one. We'll talk to you later. Behave yourself. Indeed.